Yeah, shalom family. So we are back and I'm going to walk you through the counting of the Omer. Okay? I'm going to walk you through it. So we are reading from the book called uh, the Kabbalistic Pasak Prayer Book. Okay? Remember, a lot of our writings are in these books. So... As we discussed in the earlier video, the Omer is a 49 days between Nisan and Sivan. During those, during those 49 days, there is a time of purification and a time of preparation to receive the light, the keys of light on Shabuah. Where you shall receive oneness, where you shall receive immortality. And you did that before. You actually received oneness. You actually received immortality on Mount Sinai on the day of the feast of the seven weeks. Okay? Now it says the feast of weeks, the feast of the seven weeks. The counting of the Omer connect you and I to what's called surrounding light. Surrounding light is, we'll get into it. Let me not hit, go ahead of myself. And it also connect us to what's called inner light. Okay, inner light. So once we connect to surrounding light and inner light, that's a way for us to prepare ourselves, ourselves, connect with the ultimate light, which is the great Holy One, blessed be He. Okay? And when we connect with the great, with the, with the um, ultimate light, the primordial light, on Shabuah specifically, the day following the 49 days, the seven weeks, feast of weeks, we achieve, attend immortality during Shavuot. So in Kabbalah, we learn about the 50 gates of negativity that because we were not, we didn't have a strong enough relationship with the Shekinah in Egypt, we reach 49 gates of negativity. It says that the Israelites did not have a strong enough connection with the Shekinah because they were in deep. They were deep in their own negativity. There are 50 gates of, or, or there are 50 levels of negativity. And the Yahudim reached the 49th gate of impurity. Once a person reaches the 50th gate, there is no turning back. His opportunity for change and transformation in his present lifetime has vanished. Because the Yahudims did not really marry the exodus from Egypt, they had an opportunity during the 49 days of Pesach, which is the Omer, to work on themselves spiritually and to cleanse each gate of negativity in preparation for receiving immortality on Mount Sinai. So this is what we are doing. We are reversing each gate of negativity, each level of negativity per day. 49 gates of ne negativity, 49 days of the Omer. Each gate per day, we reverse it to a good as opposed to a negative, to a positive. Okay? So it says, by counting the Omer, we lift up sparks of light that are trapped in our internal 49 gates of negativity. So these sparks of light are already within us because our essence, our nature is connected to the Most High. But they are being bombarded and, and, and negated by negativity. So we're going to raise our sparks during those 49 days. 
so we can expel negativity. 49 levels of them, 49 gates of them per day, each one per day. And on the 50th day, we will be blemished free. We will be wholesome. We will be able to receive the light that is coming to us. These 49 days is a is 49 days of preparation, cleansing, purifying. Okay. It says on Mount Sinai, when the Most High infused our world with spiritual light through the giving of Gemini, the tablets, the Torah, the written, the oral, the twins, the light that we received was so overwhelming. The light that the Most High infused into the world, which was the law was so overwhelming that it literally stamped out immortality. It stamped out decay. It said that in another record that we achieved immortality. We went back to the days when we were 20 years old. Our health were so excellent. We, were, we went back to 20 years. We were as healthy as when we were 20 years old. People grew limbs. They grew legs. Those that couldn't see, they were able to see. Those that couldn't talk were able to talk. Women that couldn't get pregnant got pregnant. The handicap was able to walk straight. Every disease, every infirmity, everything that, that came to sink our battleship, that render our lives difficult to enjoy. All those things vanished on Mount Sinai. When we, when we uh, received the law. That day on Shabua, all our sicknesses vanished. Some of them were already vanishing during the counting of the Omer. But on that day. We became immortal mortals, perfect in all our ways, wholesome. So how do we do the Omer? The Omer is seven days, seven weeks, which is 49 days. We're going to take seven. Each week goes with a C fire. Each week goes with the seven lower Sephira. Now listen, family. I can make many, 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 many connections with the Sephira and the weeks. Okay. We can go, we can talk about the angels. The watchers, the stones, the this, the that. We've done this before. But we're not going to focus on that. We're not here for that. The seven weeks we're going to focus on are going to be also, we're going to also focus on the seven lower sephirot. Beginning with kased. Okay? Beginning with kased. So the first three are keter. Hokmah and Bina. We're not going to focus on that. We're going to begin with Kased. Week one, Kased, seven days. Week two, Gabura, seven days. Week three, Tiferet, seven days. Week four, Nedzak, seven days. Week five, Hod, seven days. Week six, Yesod, seven days. In week seven, the last day, Malkut, seven days. Okay? Malkut, seven days. So what we're going to do is this. Shout out to my daughter for writing this to me. First week, Kased. Consider the Kased as a house. So you're going to be in that house for the first week of the uh, counting of the Omer. Remember... 
from the time that you had your new year, the day after your new year, counting of the Omer begun. So you have some catching up to do. You can actually catch up in one session. And then from the time that you catch up, you continue doing it. So you will go, let's just say you want to catch up today. You, you, you go to the Sephira cassette and you follow everything I'm about to show you. And you keep, you keep, you do that for the whole time you missed it. And then you begin the new, the new, the new week today. Right? So today, April 28th, let me see. This would be like the, the third week based on the day that you did your, your new year. Okay? So the first week, you in the house, said. But all the other Sifara or all the other Sifarot, they all become rooms. Room Kased, Room Gabura, Room Tiferet. So first week you're in the house, Kased, the first room in the house will be Kased, Kased, Kased. Let's just say that today, Sunday, you in the house, Kased, you in the room, Kased. Second day is Monday. You still in the house. You just moving around the rooms. You moving around the Sephira. So you go the, the the second day, which is Monday. You go to the second room. Okay, you go to the second room, which is Gavur. Third day, you're still in the same house. You go to the third room, Tiferet. Fourth day, you still stay in the same house. And then you go to the... Then you go to the fourth room. If the first room was Kased, the second room was Gabura. The third room was Tiferet. The fourth room... It's going to be hard. The fifth room is going to be Nedzak. The sixth room is going to be Yesod. The seventh room is going to be Makut. You understand? So each week, you take a Sephira. That Sephira become a house. And during that week, each day is also a Sephira. But each day is a room in that house. Second week, Gavura, Gavura. You stay in there the whole week. Then you just go room number one, Kassid. Room number two, Gavura. Room, room number three, Tiferet. Until you get to the seventh day. Seventh room. Then you do this for all the seven weeks. And this is your 49 days of counting the Omer. What do you actually say when you do it? By all means, research, Google, go online, find some information. If this is not clear enough, you can find your other information that will help you in your understanding. But I'm going to do this in a way that you can understand. So what do you actually say? Let's read this. The seventh, seven weeks by seven Sifarot, by seven days, is equal to the 49 days of the Omer. Each day of a week raises the sparks for that particular week and that particular Sifarot. The Omer refers to the 49 days between Passover and Shabuah. When the Hebrews left Egypt on their exodus from slavery to freedom, to liberation, okay, from Nisan to Sivan, which culminated with the arrival on Mount Sinai, Sivan, 
the Hebrew letters, the Hebrew fire letters that we recite on each of the 49 days of the Omer, these Hebrew fire letters are DNA forces that we tap to to correct and to prepare ourselves for the enormous light that will be revealed on Shabuwa. Hmm? We prepare for the counting of the Omer by reciting a prayer called Lasham Yaikud. Okay? The day of Shabuwa is the day when the Mosai handed Moshe the tablets on Mount Sinai. Okay? The ten changes of light were the ten charges of light were a gift what were the ten charges of light what happened every time the most High inflicted egypt with a plague we received a charge of light the ten plagues for them were ten charges of light for us as we discussed in the other video the live the ten charges of light were a gift to us. So you add that to the 49 days. And that's the secret of the dream that I have, which I cannot reveal to you. But I'm giving you the knowledge. The 49 days it took you to travel from Egypt to Mount Sinai was a period of learning. Through your inner correction and your spiritual cleansing. And you can connect with that correction and cleansing by doing what they did, which is counting of the Omer. So we're going to begin the like hum yai could right here. Okay? Remember, we count the Omer by reciting the Lasham or like hum yai could. Lashem, Lashem, Shem, the Lashem, Shem, Shemai. Yeah, I could. Here it is. We begin. So after you prepare yourselves, you make sure the house is quiet. Everybody's sitting down. If you're not by yourself, you 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 sat for a few minutes and meditated. You got yourself together. You slow down. You light a candle because you don't you ever you never do nothing without a candle. Because you're doing it in darkness. You invite the angel of fire, the angel of water. You get a glass of water if you want. At the very least, have a candle lit. Then, you know, you concentrate your kavana, your attention to what you're doing. When everything feels good and you're ready, you did your breathing. You slow down your heart. When everything is ready and you're ready to go, you begin. You always read the Hebrew letters. You scan them. Because these are the Hebrew fire letters that have in them the, the DNA changing structure. These Hebrew letters, fire letters, have the ability to change your entire DNA. So you scan them from right to left. And then you say, for the sake of unification. You're doing this for what? For the sake of unification to unite. Because in unity is strength. In unity is power. On our flag, we have unity equals strength. Unity is power. Whatever you can do, if you, if you get with someone else or two, three, four, five, ten other people, you just multiply your energy by ten million or by a million. Unity equals strength. That's why scripture says, when the man leave his mother and his father and join with the woman, the two become one. So we're doing this for the sake of unification, for the sake of us uniting with, as one with the holy blessed one and with the Shekinah. With reverence and love and with love and reverence. 
in order to unify, to bring together as one, the name Yod Hey Vav Hey, Yahuwah, Yod Ki Vav Ki, in perfect unity. And in the name of all the Yahudims, we have hereby come to fulfill the commandment of the counting of the Omer. The Omer is so important, it has become a commandment. Mosa says, observe my laws, my statutes, and my commandments. So the Omer is a commandment that must be fulfilled. And we continue, in order to please our, to pleasure our maker and to fulfill the wish of our creator, may the pleasantness of Hashem, our power, be upon us. And may Yahuwah establish the work of our hands for us. And may the work of our hands establish Yahuwah. So they go, they tell you once again, each day of the Omer, we choose the appropriate blessing. When we count the Omer, we connect with surrounding light. In Hebrew, the surrounding light is known as Or, Makif. Or, Or means light. The Makif is surrounding, surrounding light. Okay? We also connect with inner light. Or, Panimi. So we, we read, you scan and then you read, bless all you, Hashem, or bless all you, Yahuwah, whichever one you want to use. Bless all you, Hashem, Yahuwah, our power, king of the world. You who have sanctified us with your commandments and obliged us with the counting of the Omer. Now down here they tell you what, what is surrounding light. It is the force that pushes us, that motivates us to explore spirituality and to explore the meaning of our existence. Surrounding light is the feelings within us that inspire us to do more spiritual work. Surrounding light also refers to the amount of light that each of us came to this earth to reveal. The more surrounding light, hmm? each, it, okay, forgive me, go back. It refers to the amount of light each one of us came here to reveal, but it says, to, but more often than not, too often, okay, we choose to black out our light based on what we do, fail to do what we say, fail to say what we eat, fail, we, fail to eat our actions, our lifestyles, etc., it also says um, we can tap into surrounding light through blessings. We can tap into surrounding light through nature, through connecting with the earth, through grounding, through the trees, through eating good food, electrical food, through cleansing our lymphatic system, mm? through walking on sand, on the ground, barefooted, walking on grass, to, through sun gazing. Inner light refers to the life force. Inner light refers to the life force that breathes us into existence. So inner light refers to whom? The Most High. That's the light force. That's the life force that breathes us into existence. So inner light make you focus on your soul, on your spirit, your soul, your higher self. Inner light is a fuel that sustains, it is the fuel that makes us do what we do, that animates us. We can tap into inner light through any action that is connected to a blessing. Mm? We could do something for someone else. Right? So, in addition to the seven week, seven weeks, seven days, seven sephirot, you also have the 42 letter name of the Most High, the Anabe Koak, which is also seven lines. Each of the day that you do the Omer, 
you recite a line from the Anabe Korak prayer. Kased, week one, you recite the first line. Gavura, week two, you recite the second line. Tiferet, week three, you recite the third line. Netzach, week four, you recite the fourth line. Hard, week five, you recite the fifth line. Yesad, week six, you recite the sixth line. Malkut, week seven, you recite the seventh line. When you recite the Anabe Koak prayer, what's important is not the, the words that you're saying at all. The song is actually a way to... The song of the Anabe Koak is actually a way to conceal the mystery of the names of the... Spirit intelligences that are there. So, when you say Anna Bekoak, you actually go do that Yemenka. You actually saying the name of the angel that's there. The name of the angel that's on the Anna Bekoak Gadula Chemnika. The first line you do on the first week, first day. The name of this angel is called Avgitat. The second line of the Anabe Kwak prayer, there is another name of an angel. When you say Kabel Rinat, Hamka Sakvenu, Taharenu Nova, the K in the Kabel Rinat, there's an angel there that's called Karastan. The third line begins with Nagibo. The N is, is the name of the angel. It's called Nagdikesh. The fourth line when you say Barkim Taharim Rakame Sitkateka Tamit Gamlam, that B is another name of a spirit intelligence, and the name is Batrat Tag. These were the names in the in the book, the Sword of Moses. Because these names were also engraved on the sword of Moses, the 42 letter name, Excalibur, and also the 72 letter name of the Most High. And in this video, we're going to talk about how they were also engraved on the shield of David. They were engraved on the shield of David as the menorah and also as the star, Magian star of David. We'll get to it. So each line, the first letter of the line, has the name of the spirit intelligence that is attached with the line. The next line starts with a C. Hasin Kadosh Beruf Tufka Nahel Larateka. The name of the angel is Shak or Chak or Shakvitna. Shakvitna. The fifth line here. It's called Shavatenu Kaber Ushma Sa Akatenu. Okay? Your day at Talamut. What's important in there is the first S. The S. Okay? So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, it says Yaglev Zak. Okay. The the one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh line is Baruk Sham Kivo Makoto Leolam Vae. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. The seventh line, the the sixth line is is Yahid Gede. Forgive me. The sixth line is starts with a Y. The line is Yahid Gede Leam Nehatne Zokri Kadusha Teka. That Y. The name is Yaglev Zak. And then the last line was Baruch Shem Kivot Makotole Olam Vaet, which they say you gotta read. Uh, 
You should, you should whisper it. We said no, because Joshua did not whisper it. The most I told him to shout. That S, Shavatenu Kabel, the name is Shakudzit. Shavatenu Kabel, Ushma Sakatenu Yodiat, that's Shakudzit. And then, and then after that, you say, Bahu Sham Kivo Makutole Olam So, the, each day, goes with a line along with each week. So by the time you go through the week, you went through the entire seven lines of the Anabe Koak. You actually said the entire prayer. By the time you did the seven weeks, you have done this prayer 49 times. Can you imagine the connection you can make with this prayer. You're not only making the connection with the prayer, you're also, you're, you're also making the connection with the 42 names of the Most High. You're also making the connection with the planetary alignments. You're also making the connection with the 42 angels, which we already shared on this channel. You're also making the connection with those 42 angels, which their names were acronymed by the names I just mentioned, the seventh names, the seven uh, uh, words that starts by the first letter of the Anabe Koak. There are 42 names of the Most High in this prayer, and there are also 42 names of the spirit intelligences, the angels. And I have videos on this already, if you want to go back and watch the videos so you can learn the names and learn the name of the Most High and learn the name of the angels. A few name of the Mosai. Adil Yaron. Bahi Yaron. Gavi Yaron. Yigbaya. A few names of the angels. Opaniel. Boel. Gavriel. Yofiel. Tumiel and Zadkiel. 42 of them. So by the time you finish this exercise, You'll be connected with the Anabe Koak on a whole nother level. That's why it says page 742. Because by the time you're done, you're going to be connected with this 42 letter name of the Most High times 7. Which is 49 times of reciting this. So you'll be in oneness with it. You see? These angels are also the angels that help you cleanse that help you purify, that protect you. The angels on the 42 letter name of the Most High, these are the angels on the Sephiroth Gavura. Angels of strength, angels of might, angels of justice. But they are also angels of kindness. They have a duality. Okay? So, after you, after you did the uh, Lekom prayer, you, you, you bless all you Hashem. You start the prayer right here for the sake of unification. It continues here. And then you recite. You can do two things. What we do, we actually say the whole prayer. We, we recite the entire thing. And then we go back and we focus on that one line. After you do that, you continue the blessings. You continue tapping into inner light now. Inner light. And you, and you start from here. You say, the merciful one. He will return the service of the holy temple to its place speedily. And in our days. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Over here. They tell you what happened with David when he. Connected with the Anabe Koak. The great warrior and mystic king. See, David was a mystical king. He had that mystical power. He, he reverenced the Most High and he had the power. How you, how, you know, how you think Solomon received that? He passed it to Solomon. The great warrior and mystic king David had this menorah. Where's the menorah? Right here, he had this menorah engraved on his shield. So David had this. When he had this, this symbolized the 42-letter name 
end of 72 letter name. He had that engraved on his shield. Which they call the shield of David. When the Mosa presented Moshe with a vision of how to construct the menorah for the tabernacle, which housed the Ark of the Covenant, the Mosai, the great Holy One, blessed be He, used the design of the He used the design of the menorah. The correct menorah must have seven leaves. Is the almond tree? Is the almond leaf? It must have seven. Each line represent one line of the Anabekoak. Each line represent one week of the Omer. Each line represent one Sephira. The seventh line, the seven lines represent the, the whole Anabekoak prayer. The seven lines represent the seven lower Sephiroth. And the seven lines represent um, each day of the Omer. You understand? So David had this menorah. With all the names of God, 40, 42, 72. Okay, now remember the 72 names of the Most High? is actually 260 names because there are three pillars. So he had the left, the right, and the middle. He had, he had, the, he had Gemini. He had the angels on the left, the angels on the right, 72, 72. And he had the angels in the middle pillar, 72 times 3 is 216 Spirit intelligences that can do anything he wants them to do. In addition to the 42. So the great warrior and mystic King David had this menorah engraved on his shield, the shield of David. When the Mosai presented Moshe with a vision on how to construct the menorah for the tabernacle, the Mosai used this blueprint. He used this design. So what happened when King David went to war, he would meditate on the holy names and call it onto this menorah. And what happened to his enemies? They would literally fall in defeat right in front of him. So what does that mean for you? That means this, the power behind the shield of David, which has the 42 and the 72, which is actually 216. You should also meditate on these names, these powers, so you can employ these things in your own lives. So when you are faced with your end, with your own enemies or your outside enemies, you can employ these magical names, these mystical names, these powers from these names derived from the magic star of David, from the menorah, the knowledge that came from the electrum, the chasmo, the inner chasmo of the Most High. You can employ these names in your everyday. To help you with your situation, whatever it is that you're going through. And especially during the counting of the Omer to clear the way of the 49 gates of negativity. So you can actually raise your sparks that you already have in it within you. So you can be prepared, ready and able to stand in front of the Mosai on Shabuah to receive oneness immortality. You can harness the strength, the valor of King David so that you can defeat your own enemies. You understand? And then you continue. You say, for the musician, a melodious song, any song. May Elohim give us favor. Remember, Elohim is plural. Elohim refer, referencing is referring to all the spirit intelligences that, on, that is on the menorah, the magic star of David, the Anabe the 216. Elohim is not singular. Elohim is plural. For the musician, a melodious psalm and a melodious song. So this is a psalm and a song. May Elohim give us favor. May Elohim bless us. May Elohim shine his countenance over us or for us. Salah. To know your ways. To have known your ways. To know your ways to the world. To make known your ways to the world. And to make known your salvation among the nations. The nations shall give thanks to you, O Elohim. All the nation shall give thanks to you. If you want to know a perfect psalm to recite, how David used the margin star, the uh, how he used the 42 and the 216, the 72 times 3, read Psalm 18. Read it. 
in the book of Joshua and also read it in Telahim 18. You will see how David annihilated his enemies, how the Most High gave him superpower through this through this meditation. And then you continue. Remember to always scan the Hebrew from right to left. The peoples shall rejoice. The people shall sing because you judge nations with fairness. And you guide peoples on earth. Selah. The nations shall give thanks to you, Elohim. All nations shall give thanks to you. The earth has given its yield. May Elohim our God bless us. And he is a star. He is the menorah. He is the power. He is the emblem of the tabernacle. He is the blueprint that the Most High gave to Moshe, gave to um, David, gave to Solomon, gave to Abraham, gave to Shem, gave to Noah, gave to Seth, gave to Yatsikad, and gave it also to the Maccabees that they were able to destroy their enemies. He gave it to Makandal, the Haitian warrior who defeated the colonizers. He gave it to Desalin, all our ancestors who had the sacred knowledge. Yahush, Yeshua had it because he had uh, he had sacred mystery schools. He had a sacred gospel where he taught this to his secretive, secretive disciples, not to everybody. This is sacred knowledge. This is for the sacred, sacred. This is for the chosen, chosen. This is for the few hidden among the many. Do not take this for granted. Here is the prayer. The explanation. The prayer. You recite it. And then you close. We, we are approaching the closing of the counting of the Omer. After you say the prayer, Anabi Koak, the last name is blessed, is the name of glory, his kingdom is forever and ever. So now let's read it in English. In English, it says, We beseech you with the power of your great right, undo this entanglement. Accept the singing of your nation, strengthen your nation, purify your nation, O oh, awesome one. And that's what you're doing right now during counting the Omer. Please, Almighty One, those who seek your unity, those who seek your oneness, because we're doing this for the sake of unification with the great Holy One and His Shekinah. So we're saying, please, Almighty One, those who seek your unity. So see, that's why we say those who seek your unity, because the ancestors realize not everybody going to seek the unity. Even as the information is given, not everybody going to seek the unity, the oneness of the Most High, the Great Holy One, blessed be He, and His Shekinah. So we saying, please, Almighty One, those who seek your unity, guard them. Guard them like the pupil of your eye. Bless them who seek your unity. Purify them who seek your unity. Your compassionate righteousness. Always grant them compassionate righteousness. Invincible Mighty One, with your abundance, with your goodness, govern your congregation. O oh, soul and, and proud one, return. Turn to your people. Turn to your people. Your people who remember your sanctity. Accept our cry. Hear our well. You that knows all that is hidden in the chambers of our heart. And then over here they say, whisper. Don't whisper that. Joshua shouted out. He said, Baruch Shem Kivot Markuto Leolam Vayet. Blessed is the name of glory. His kingdom is forever and for eternity. David said, I will praise your name in the congregation of the heathens. How can you bless and praise the name of the Most High by whispering it? Now you got to say it loud and proud. In the congregation of the heathens. Okay? And then you say, and then once you say this, you say that. You say, you scan it, and then you say, O master of the world, you have commended us through Moshe. Why? Because a commandment. Your servant to enumerate the counting of the Omer in order to purify us from our Kalipat. Kalipat is defilements. Clip out is those things that you need to take off of you to be purified. 
This is as it is written in your Torah, in your law, in your Gemini, in your twins. You shall count for yourselves from the day following the Shabbat. From the day on, from the day on, we shall bring the portion of your wave offering. There shall be seven complete weeks. Seven times seven is 49. There shall be seven complete weeks until the day following the seventh week. The day following the seventh week is Shabuwa. So the day after your first Shabbat from your holy day count seven weeks. Until the day after Shabbat, okay? Until the day following the seventh week, that day is the 50th day is Shabuwa. On that day, you achieve 50 gates of positivity. You replace 49 days, <coughs> forgive me, you replace 49 gates of 49 gates and 49 levels of negativity per day. Each day you did the Omer, replaced, nullified, annihilated, destroy a level of negativity, a gate of negativity. On the 49th day, you totally reversed 49 gates of negativity. Now, all your sparks of light that were hidden inside of you are now exposed to shine bright like the firmament. Like the brightness of the firmament. In addition to that, the day after the 49th day is the 50th day. That day is Shabuwa. That's the day you become in oneness. That's the day that the Most High gave Moses the twins, Gemini, the law, the oral, the written. That's the day you achieve immortality. That's the day the Most High instilled light that was so bright in the world, it literally took away death, disease, ailments. It literally was a time of genuine immortality. This is when you became immortal mortals. Had you not sinned 39 days after that time, have you not looked over and looked for something higher that you thought in your mind was higher than the Most High? You would have stayed in immortality from back then. When you sinned with the calf, you brought back death. You brought back decay. They returned because you went seeking for them. During this time, you have an opportunity to expel them from your life once again, to reach immortality, to reach a level of spirituality, just as you achieved when you were in the wilderness, when you were on Mount Sinai eons ago, eons ago in the presence of the Most High. Whether you believe it or not is a whole different story. The first week of the Omer corresponds to Kased, which is the highest level. You could read that on your own. And then you conclude. You said, therefore, may be pleasing before you, Yahuwah. May be pleasing before you, Hashem, our power and the power of our forefathers, that by virtue of the counting of the Omer that we have counted today, the flaw that we have caused in the Sephira, Sephira, of whichever day you're doing. See? The flaw that you cause in the Sephira of Kased, you're going to put it right here. You're going to say, the flaw that I have caused in the Sephira of Kased will be corrected. And I shall be purified and sanctified with supernal sanctity. Hallelujah. Selah. So what you're doing, you are correcting the flaw in the Sephira. You are correcting the flaw in each Sephira for each week, every day, for seven weeks. And on the 50th day, you celebrate the feast of your victory over the seven weeks. That's why they call it the Feast of Weeks, which is inaccurate. We are going to call it from now on the Feast of the Seven Weeks, which is particularly speaking of the seven weeks of the counting of the Omer, 
the day, the time from Nisan, the new year, to Sivan, Shabuwa. Okay? And that's, why, that's how you do that right there. That's how you count the Omer. That's how you count the Omer. When you do it, you go read all the pages minus all my talking. Okay? You go read, you go read all the pages minus all my talking. So this is a, a illustration for you. Okay? Week one. I'm not sure if I did this already. Probably did. Each week you do. That week, that Sephira is considered a house. The other Sephira, Sephiroth, are considered a room in the house. So week one, Kased, room one, Kased. Second day, you stay in the house. The house is Kased. You stay in the house for the whole week. And you just keep moving, out, moving around in different rooms. So you move around with the different Sephiroth. So day two, week one, you still stay in Kased. You go to the next Sephira. Day three, week one, you still stay in the house, Kased. You go to another room. Day four, you still stay in the house, Kased. You go to another room, which is another Sephira. You do that and you follow that right there. You understand? What actually happens? What actually happens to us? With the Torah, with the light, besides the oneness, besides the immortality. We go to key 213. We're going to get a different aspect, a metaphysical view of what is actually happening when you receive the law, the light, the Torah, the twins, Gemini, Sivan. It says here in Keys 213, page 289. Whenever the scriptures of light are not preached, the vibrations of God's word not heard, the body cannot be activated to become the living Torah or to become the light. Wherever the scriptures of light are not preached, wherever the vibrations of the Mosai's words are not heard, your body cannot become the living word, the living Torah or you cannot become a light body, a body of light to represent the most high. You, be, you are a body of darkness if you don't hear the words of light preached to you. Enoch says it was necessary that the Adamic race preserve the radiations. You know what? Of the color harmonics between the nations of the earth. You see? This is going to take you to another level. Let's not go to this paragraph because that's a whole nother lesson. Let's not go to this paragraph right there. Let's go to another one. Page 230, we still in keys. Now we're in keys 206, page 230. We're going to stay in the frequency of the light, the Torah, the law. Number 20. Number 19. Keys 206, page 230, number 19 plus. As long as man thinks he is God... He will never acquire the angelic radiations of true creation. For this reason, man remains locked in space, remains crucified to his body of relativity. Why? Because your scientific consciousness tells you that you are the only life force on the tree of life. Hmm. Meanwhile, the tree of life have to at least... 216 emissaries of light. So you are not the only life force on the tree of life. Hmm? He 
He said, because you think that way, you think that you do not have to humble yourself to the higher intelligence. Which is there to create for you more godliness. The higher intelligence is also the spirit intelligence is on the tree of life that you don't recognize. That you don't connect to. Because when we were reading the Anabe Korak, it says those who, those who seek your holiness. This is for those who seek the holiness of the Most High who don't think that they are God on earth. But they are trying to be God-like. And the spirit intelligences who are also on the tree of life, they are the higher intelligence, just like the Most High is. They are there to create for you more godliness. This key tells us that the, the, the Torah, the law, the light, is the synthesis of all the languages. Mm-hmm. All the languages of cosmology and it is a synthesis of all the languages of astronomy that you must go through. If you don't do that, you may fall victim to the wrong vibrations of the fallen orphanim who give you the Greek, who give you the Greek zodiac signs. There are fallen orphanims. Now all the orphanims are righteous. There are those that fall. Fall into these. They will give you the wrong knowledge. Lest you confuse the information from the Most High with information of the fallen entities. Torah teaches us not to only hear the language of light, but to humbly receive, to humbly use the language of light, to probe and overstand the highest fears of the heavens and the Shekinah, dimensions of the Father's garment of which the earth is a part of. Enoch said the Sanskrit and the Tibetan languages were the vertical alignments of of all the biological languages working on a line light vertical movement throughout the human body all is saying that back in the days when the sanskrit tibet language were were when 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 the holy spirit the dove was in the east these languages were being used and people were using the Torah, reading these languages. And it was sort of like a meridian light going through the chakra system throughout your body. Okay? It says now the Hebrew language of light has been chosen to synthesize the cosmology. Why? Because the dove has returned to the West. The great land of the West. Back then it was the Sanskrit language. The Tibetan languages. It was in the East. Now the Hebrew language of light. Has been chosen to synthesize. The cosmology. Of this present cycle. Of creation. You could just go to the back of your book of Enoch. And look up words like cosmology. Torah or. Or means light. Torah means law. Laws of light. Now the Hebrew language of light has been chosen to synthesize the cosmology of your present cycle of creation. He said, with the Zohar races, the Zoharim races in advanced star evolutions, the Hebrew language of crystal works. The Hebrew language of crystal works with all 12 meridians of light. It's actually 13 meridians of light because we have 13 tribes 13 lunar months the rose is 13 12 petals in the most size the stem the rose above with the rose below 13 most sacred sites on the earth everything is by 13 
and the star messengers, the higher of our name. Remember, we have fallen of our name and we have higher of our name. The higher of our name are called star messengers. What do they do? They speak directly through the masters of light whose vibrations sound in the scrolls of the Torah. So who's speaking with you right now? Not me. You are hearing me, but it is the Ophanim, the star messengers speaking directly through me. Speaking directly through others who you consider a master of light. Or who the Most High say, these are masters of light. These are my emissaries of light. These are my prophet chosen from the belly, from the womb of Rebecca. These are my people chosen. Since Sivan, since Gemini. The first, the primordial Torah, which is the primordial light, is the exact blueprint the most have followed in creating the world. And then you can go into the rest yourself. We're still in Key 206. You're going to learn something different. The Torah also employs the divine, for the divine name, 32 times in creation. The Torah employs the divine name of the Most High. 32 times in the creation story at the beginning of the book Genesis. The name of the Mosai was used 32 times in creation of the world. This represents the 32 paths of wisdom which is on the Kabbalah tree of life. This represents the 32 path by means of of which the Hokma wisdom manifests herself. Sifa Yetzira, tree of life, 32 parts of wisdom. But watch this. Let's go to 52. The Torah speaks of this unification of the 32 chemical building blocks within men. Which allows you to receive what's called the lack by mirror. Those 32 sparks of light, those 32 paths of wisdom allow you to receive what's called the 33rd degree, the pillar of light, called the lack by mirror. So the 32 path. Leads you to the 33rd degree. Through this 32 path, the soul has a pure gem seed of Nagin and a hidden, a united substance, a Yahida, highest category of experience. The soul descends to be clothed into the physical body. Through the 32 path of wisdom, that one soul descends. And once the soul unite with the 32 path of, of Hokma, you receive what's called the 33rd degree. The 32 path plus the one soul make the 33rd degree. And this is where they get the 33 degree of Masonic rites. This is the original. You are the original 33rd degree. Because your 32 degree is the Shekinah wisdom. And the other degree is yourself, your soul that came from the higher realm. The Nagin are hidden, the united substance that descended to be clothed into a physical body. When that happens, you jump to Lak Boimer, 33rd degree, which is the pillar of light. 
The lag biomer exemplifies the initiation with the 22 letters of the divine signature, the Hebrew alebets, which in Kabbalah, in mysticism called the Otiot, O-T-I-O-T. -O it is a unification of these letters of creation because they were the Elohim which created It exemplifies your initiation with them. The 22 letters of the divine signature in the mathematical construction of Exodus 33rd degree and 22 letters of the alphabet Exodus 32 and 22. Hmm? When you read the rest, you could see when this light, when you're in the presence of this power, what happens to you. You can read the rest to see what happened to Moses when he was in the presence of this great power. And Yeshua also, what happened to him. We still in Key 206. Hmm? This is how this leads you to Shabuah. This leads us to Shabuah. It leads us from Nisan, from captivity, passing through Ayah, the month of healing, to 49 days of counting of the Omer, to Sivan, the day of Shabuah. This is where we connect the dots. We still in key 206, number 57. The keys of the mathematical language of the Torah can also be seen in numerous other events which augment the spiritual body. For example, the day of the first fruits is a Hebrew festival celebrated 50 days after Passover. That's Shabuah. Numbers 28 verse 26. This is how they're going to show you how the keys of the fire letters, the mathematical language of the Torah, augment your spiritual body. Another example. It says it happens on the day of celebration of the feast of the seven weeks, which is also called fresh fruits. It's a Hebrew festival celebrated 50 days after Passover. It's called Shabuah. It's called Pentecost. It's called the Feast of the Seven Weeks. It marks the harvest of the first fruits of the Old Testament. In Acts 2, occurred during the, this festival showing the first fruits of the Holy Spirit given the first fruit of the Holy Spirit is given on Shabuah to what? To activate the bodies of light. To activate the bodies of light. But remember, it tells you. Remember, it tells you right here. Wherever the scriptures of light are not preached. Wherever the vibration of God's words are not heard, the body cannot be activated to become the living Torah or to become the light. To become the law of light. You see that right there? In the hour of graduation, number 62, our body will be as a Torah scroll charged with light and delivered as a gift to the mentioned world of Kabbalah, higher realms. Through Kabbalah, the manifestation of activities. Through Kabbalah, the manifestation of activities and the functions of the faculties which are reserved for the ascended masters are passed. The pass on to you, sense of light. 
You who have overcome darkness with the power of God's words, his light, his Torah all. As Hosanna is united with the unspeakable splendor of the Yesh Mi'ayin. Which means as a splendor, as Hosanna is united with the unspeakable splendor of God, the Most High, as he really is. This is utterly beyond your comprehension. Remember who you are, family. Remember who you are and who you shall be. On thy son, the day that you left, the day that you left Egypt, that very day, that very night, the Most High gave you a glimpse of what you could be on Shabuwa. The Most High gave you a glimpse of what you can accomplish during the during the counting of the Omer, the 49 days. And he took away the vision. But the vision was motivation enough to motivate you to do the work to achieve immortality. I mean, I would do anything for the Mossad to achieve immortality now. No more sickness. No more headache. No more pain. No more heartache. No more death. What wouldn't you do for that? Initiate your body. Reach to that 33rd degree of light. Go through the 32 path of wisdom. Allow your soul to descend and merge. And become that 32, 33 degree of light. That initiation of light. That initiation of light. That initiation of righteousness. Hmm? The unification of the 32 chemical building blocks which allow you to receive the 33rd degree when your soul descends to unify with the 22 letters of the Alabet, the Elohim who created with the Mosai in Genesis. I pray that this short presentation resonated with your spirit. Remember, remember, Gemini is the law. Remember, Gemini is Jacob alone, no one else. Esau. Is given two other months, Tammuz and Av. Jacob is given Nisan, Ayar, which combines and leads to Sivan. He is the light on the left and the light on the right, merged as one in the middle pillar in Tiferet, where the archangel Uriel is, with 365, 10,000 times 10,000 of angels, with 365 keys of light ready to deliver them to you on Shabuwa. Will you do the work? Will you take your life serious and focus on the most high and do the work? I almost forgot. Something I must read to you. I almost forgot. Let's go to the book of remembrance of Enoch. I almost forgot. Forgive me. Let's go to the book of remembrance of Enoch. You know what? I'll read this to you another time. The video is long enough. I'll read this to you another time. Give you a review of our amazing the holy days are to the most high. The division of days. Adahiel. The division of days. The holy days of the most high. I will give you a review. Of how amazing it is to you. And how amazing. They are to the most high. And how they were. These division of days were a mode of protection for you. 
to connect with your father, with your uh, creator, your mother, your father on a higher, more intimate, more special level. You don't have enough words to articulate your gratefulness, family. You don't have enough words to articulate your commitment to the supernal power, the supreme one, the amazing one, the magnificent one, the magnanimous one, the sublime power, the great I am, loving kindness, the holy great one, Anu said. You don't have enough words to articulate your thank yous. Until we meet again, family, all praises to the most high, our power, the great I am, loving kindness, the holy great one, the power of the Yahudims. All praises to the all merciful father, the one who was. All praises to the all merciful mother, the one who is and the one who is to come. Ya shalom.